Assalamu alaikum everybody today we are going to talk about a short story called Atar of Roses written by Tahira Naqvi When you read these three words Atar of Roses what comes to your mind think about it what is atar to you right now this is the anthology and the story that we are going to cover is also called atar of roses but the anthology's name is atar of roses and other short stories of pakistan which is written and compiled by tahira naqvi tahira naqvi is originally from pakistan and um, she has uh, you know done her MA in psychology from government college lahore and she also has a ms in english education and at the moment she lives in united states with her sons and um, in state university she has taught english since 1983 so we get to know that she's a teacher as well and she has a background of psychology and english education her short stories have been widely anthologized and her translations from urdu of well known indian and pakistani writers have been published in the united states so she is also a translator europe and asia so she has covered these three places that is united states europe and asia other of roses comprises tales told with verve and passion that provide glimpses into pakistani society from family relationships marriage and rights of passage to societal roles and the impact of political change but the backdrop of pakistan does not limit their scope in atar of roses a schoolmaster's obsession with the woman whose face he never sees although rooted in the custom of veiling also exemplifies the universal yearning for the unattainable similarly the young wife in the notebook symbolizes the plight of all the women who experience an intellectual awakening while struggling against oppression like we waves together imagery and tone in a way that enables the reader to feel an affinity for a culture that may at first glance seem distant and uh, impenetrable romantic humorous vibrant her stories are full of such elements and they are well informed and they are there to entertain as well we are going to look at a review of the anthology called other of roses and other short stories from pakistan this review has been given by babsi sedwa and i quote i was asked last year by the members of a reading group in massachusetts why is it every time we read a story with a muslim setting it sensationalizes some dreadful aspect of the culture like not without my daughter is not there any fiction about ordinary day to day life in a muslim setting of course there is but little that i know of in english western publishers favor the sensational i suggested sara sulehri's magical memoir meatless days and although it is an entirely different book I can now also recommend Tahira Naqvi's Atar of Roses to anyone who is interested in the portrayal of middle class family and their life in Pakistan. This collection of short stories devoid of stylistic pre- pretensions or you know it is refreshing honest in its depiction. Tahira Naqvi who migrated to the united states as a young bride and purports to write from memory has a very good memory indeed and an eye for the accumulation of detail that brings the characters mostly women and the environment to life many of the stories do in fact portray the oppression and you know subjugation of women but that reflects an unavoidable reality which is common to the indian subcontinent i found a woman of no consequence particularly disturbing in this respect quite a few stories in this collection center around matchmakers and marriage and the steamy 
undergrowth of sexual pressure that lurks beneath the surface of segregated society. In the title story, Atar of Roses, a school teacher becomes hopelessly enamored of a veiled woman who he catches a whiff of her perfume and a glimpse of her beautiful hands and feet. He pines to see her face but never does. Peephole Romance describes marvelously the anticipation with which young girls conjure up and then view through peepholes their suitors. Love is an election year skillfully connects two different periods in Pakistani history with the election campaigns of Ms. Fatma Jinnah and later of Benazir Bhutto. Tahira Nakui's nuanced expression is a pleasure to read. A tiny finger crawled up, hesitatingly traveling slowly up and down along the chain. The touch of the touch so quiet the old man could barely feel it. In the story of a child's determination to steal his grandfather's watch, the author reveals also the alienation and helplessness of old age. Not all stories are sad. Tahira Nakvi brings an imaginative sense of humor and playfulness to poke fun at a holy man in Master. In this well-constructed story, the holy man, rumored to have no need to defecate, is caught literally with his pants down. And then there is a story called Lahore Diary that depicts the bizarre passions evoked during during cricket matches between India and Pakistan among the spectators. Winning a match is equated to vanquishing the enemy and losing it with the abject national humiliation experienced by the defeated in the war. In her quiet way, Taira Nakui sustains attention and suspense that make many of her stories compulsively readable. Now, once you have read the story, you will find a number of themes in the story. Uh, I have noted down or, you know, identified few for them and there are many others as well. The first theme that is going to be focused in this lecture is struggles of middle class. The second is a cluster of different, you know, similar kind of themes that is desire, emotions and urges. And then... The third and the most important theme is reality. Now, theme one, struggles of middle class. Now, I'm going to read a passage from the short story which depicts the struggle of middle class. Swiftly, he turned some pages. If only he could take the magazine home with him. He scanned the cover, 10 rupees. Too much for just one magazine, for one poem. His children would be waiting eagerly for the mangoes. He bought every day and a 10 rupee note was all he had this afternoon. It was either the magazine or the mangoes. He wiped his face with a soiled handkerchief that had soaked up the day's sweat and grim. And ignoring the resentful stare of the owner of the book stand continued reading. It is evident from these lines that the character whose name is Said cannot buy the magazine he's keenly reading at the moment and he can only choose one of the two. It is either the mangoes or the magazine. That is the true depiction of the struggle of a middle class man because the elite class or you know upper middle class or anybody who has a good amount of money won't have to think twice about it. So that is one of the examples of the theme struggles of middle class. There are a number of them in the rest of the story that you will have to identify yourself. Now coming towards theme two, that is the cluster of 
desire emotions and urges i'm going to read two paragraphs from the story which are true depiction of these themes the skin was pale and unlined the color a purely shade of jasmine the fingers slender the nails neatly rounded and pink and the little he saw of the wrist was encased in black glass bangles that made a silvery tinkling sound every time she moved her arm on the back of her hand the thin blue veins were like delicate shadows across the face of a rose petal he had not seen such a hand before how yielding to the touch he thought the glass like a promise of love and then his eyes followed her slim form down to where the burqa ended at the level of her ankles he saw her feet wrapped in dark sandals with narrow leather bands they were like the moon at midnight great clouds rolling in thin strips across the disk of gold Said realized he was staring at her although she did not seem to be aware of his scrutiny for she remained engrossed in the magazines his behavior was improper he looked away quickly but within moments his attention was drawn to her again she had lifted a corner of her veil and was now talking to the owner of the book stand something about the price he overheard because her back was to him he did not see any part of her face not even a cheek or a brow while he looked on his heart hammering in his chest as if he were a love sick school boy she took some money from a purse that hung on her arm and handed it to the vendor now through the paragraphs we can get a glimpse or an understanding that how much emotions said the main character might have been feeling the urge that he had to look at her face and the desire which drove him to behave improperly so these two paragraphs they depict desire emotions and urges of a middle class man who is you know financially struggling and somehow not happy with his life so he's trying to gain some kind of control maybe so that he has something to think about because when we look at these lines while he looked on his heart hammering in the chest as if he were a love love sick school boy so these paragraphs show that how limited resources said had and he had a struggling life but even then this desires emotions and urges they are there he is unable to control them and he is somehow lost in the moment these paragraphs are depicting such elements clearly now coming towards another example of the same theme reality another example of the same theme is and i'm going to read it from the text while the boy waited and then placed the mangoes in a paper bag for him he fumbled in his pocket for money 9 rupees and 50 pesos said heard the boy say she had paid and was preparing to move off now this is a scene where the girl in the burqa has bought something and said is also standing nearby and he is actually buying mangoes the change sahib the boy said but said had no time to collect his change he was going to take the bus he realized so the girl in the burqa was about to leave for her home and he was so lost 
in her that he forgot to take his change from the boy. It was the 2.30 bus she boarded and as he scrambled in after her, he saw her moving toward the women's section in the front of the bus. Soon he was swallowed by a throng of passengers packed together like matchsticks in a matchbox. Said could no longer see her. There were burkas everywhere. The pounding of his heart grew until he felt he would collapse to the floor of the bus. He tried to force his way through the crowd of men around him, pushing and jostling as he inched forward. Suddenly, the bus stopped. Several people got off. Several more came on. Women buried in white chadars and black burkas, hollow-cheeked, tired men, sweating and exhausted, children with pale draw faces and listless eyes. He craned his neck to see if she was among the passengers who had just alighted. He could not tell. These paragraphs show that how limited resources Said had and he had a struggling life but even then the desires, emotions and urges, they are there. He is unable to control them and he is somehow lost in the moment. These paragraphs are depicting such elements, clear. Now coming towards another example of the same theme, reality, I am going to read from the text. This time Said stayed close to her, some women standing no more than a few inches from him, grumbled that he was in the women's section. One tried to push him with her basket. The division was arbitrary, so he ignored their muttering and kept his eyes on her. Fifteen minutes later, she got off at a stop. He recognized as Shahlami and he got off with her. She walked for nearly half a mile before turning into a residential area, not unlike the one where he lived. The streets were dark and narrow. The houses lined up one on top of another, huddled together, a little sky visible where the roofs ended. She turned into a gully and Said followed her at a discreet distant pace. He did not wish to frighten her. Some children play gully danda and marbles on the cobbled street. He had not given any thought to what he was going to do. Would he talk to her? Would he stop her and ask the way to some imaginary street? Would he tell her who he was? A peddler with a clanking narrow steel trunk strapped to back of his bicycle and filled with stale pastries, Said knew, trudged past him, pastry, pastry, the men drawn on interminably. Now, in these two paragraphs, it is clear that he was struggling financially, emotionally, psychologically, but he kept on actually um, following her and he was wary of the situation he was actually asking himself what he is going to ask her will he stop her will he uh, you know ask her some kind of uh, imaginary street which is not there in the very first place he's very much conscious he knows the reality but he still goes on with this fake reality in his mind that he thinks after talking to this Burka girl might change. Maybe there's this kind of urge within him, right? And that is drifting him away from the reality. But 
the fact that he asks a number of questions to himself says or depicts that he knows his own reality. Now with continuing the same example, I'm going to read from the text. He ran to the end of the gully. There was no sign of her. She could have gone through one of the innumerable doors that lined the darkened alley on both sides. Which one? His heart beat with uncontrollable force. He gasped, cursing himself, cursing the paddler. He felt like an animal that had been trapped and was struggling to be free. Oh God, oh God, help me. He whispered helplessly, hot tears streaming down his face. He's self-aware, he's self-reflective. He is feeling something that is making him feel trapped in his own ways. And then he cries like a normal, normal person. So he knows the reality that he cannot have her. He cannot look at her. But he wants her anyway. He wants something from her anyway. And he's not sure. So he says, oh God, oh God, help me. Okay, next lines are from the text again. And they also depict the reality, the theme of reality. Rosia had made lamb curry. Said could smell the aroma of meat cooked in spices, steamed with fresh springs of coriander. He heard her on the other side of the door, fiddling the latch. When he opened the door, he thrust a package into her hands. What's this? she asked. Where is the fruit? She followed him into their bedroom. Silently, he took the package from her hands and emptied it on the bed. A pair of shiny black sandals with thin leather straps. A set of black glass bangles spilling out of their white tissue paper wrapping with a musical jangle and tiny bottle. Gingerly, Razia picked up the bottle. A thought of roses, she said looking at him incredulously. Now, these lines have the gist of the entire story. It is like the main, you know, let's say climax or the conclusion of the story. Now, Said knew that he couldn't have that Burka girl and all the characteristics or features she had. So what he does is he brings all these you know, decorative stuff for her So basically the reality is he cannot have the Burka girl. So what he does is he brings all the ornaments, jewel and uh, sandals for his wife and he also brings other of roses. So if you remember in the very few first paragraphs of the story we came across an example where Saeed actually examines his wife and he knows that she doesn't have the warmth or the uh, you know youngness once she had because of the hardships of life the financial issues and that is one thing he could you know, find in the book, girl. So he brings these things to his wife so that he can have his own kind of reality with his wife. 